Hi, I'm Kathy Ann. Today we're going to talk about making boxes from recycled bags. Now I do print recycled bags, digitally print them, and that's a whole other issue, but today I'm going to show you, um, just in time for the holidays too, huh, for me to take this, this is a box pattern, so this is going to have a five inch side on the whole thing, five inches up, and then a cover. So when you're going to make the box, you decide what your base is going to be. You make the three sides the same as the base, and then you make this one side twice the base. Now, any overlaps and stuff we'll do in the plastic, or we might and we may, and we'll see what happens. So I'm using this as a pattern to lay out my plastic because I'm going to melt my plastic so that it'll make this pattern. So you get to decide what you're going to use in plastic bags. Now for myself, for this, I'm not going to worry too much. I'm just going to take the paper tags off. I know this should be at least about maybe two or three. No, actually it might, might need to be more. We'll start with, uh, let's start with five surfaces and we'll see where we get to as we manipulate this plastic. At one spot here, I'm going to put some things inside of it. Like I said, I do digitally print this plastic, but I'm not doing that for this demo. You can, and one of the neat things about digitally printing it, instead of having to use any varnishes or anything on top, you can just use a piece of plastic and melt it over the print, or add little pieces of the print inside it. Now you can see we're going to be a little short here. But right now I'm just going to stick to this edge and just continue to do things to this and add plastic. I've got two down just about um, in a pattern and here's some to go under here so that I can throw some of this down. Now this is all going to shrink up so what will happen is you might have to add to the ends or you might be okay on the ends. You just keep adding your plastic until it is how you want it to be. I'm going to take this little turquoise here and just add some color. You can cut letters out. You can do all sorts of things with this. So this is like a playing project where it just doesn't even matter. And I'm going to show you some journal covers that I did like this so that you can see something that has been already whoop, melted and used in a different way. I think I'll just lay this over the top and then I'll cut it. So now I'll see if this is going to make my pattern here. I did want to tell you that this is a pressing little board so you can iron on it and this is a Teflon sheet. These are the best, the ones I like the best and I am going to have that information also for you in the PDF so you can find it, but there, that's good. Now the other thing I'm going to do is use these Teflon sheets that I'm not really crazy about, but they still work. You can use parchment paper if you want, but your surface will move and shrink a lot more underneath it if you do that. So I'm just going to lay these down. I think I have a partial one here, I do. And then I have my iron set to high and it's all ready to go and I'm going to melt it. Once you get it melted a bit and you want it to get a little bit cool before you start peeling this off, but once you get it melted a bit, you're going to want to turn it over and now melt the back side because the back side will not really be melted much at all. And actually, I could take this off of it now. You see how it's not melted in some of these areas? So, more melting to do. Now, when I think I have it close, I'm going to actually take this off. Wow, it's still really hot. And I'll take the other side off too. So you can tell it's hot because it 
is stuck a bit to the top, which sometimes you can um, tear it a little bit if that's true, and you really don't want to hurt the surface. But I'm just being impatient here and taking it apart. Okay, so now I get to look at the sides and see how I think they are. And obviously this is going to be the inside and this is going to be the outside because it has more textural surfaces. Now some of this is not melted around the actual threads and that is something you have to look for because when you put things inside this bag here will melt into it but the thread will not. So you might want to just get it a little warmer in spots. So now here's my box. Okay, so I folded this box up so that now it could be put together and it's got a little bit of a shape. There's several ways you could put this together. I'm thinking it would be just better to use needle and thread and whip stitch around it. But you could also put holes in it and put wire on it. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some holes in it and wire it together. So this is my old standby. My original wire punch or metal punch. Well, actually, I think it's a paper punch. Ah! And it makes really little holes. And I like this one the best. And it's still working after a lot of years with beverage cans. I'm going to use this artistic wire to just wire it up. And then what I'll do is I'll fold these together hole punch just to make some little holes and yes I'm not doing this exact and yes there'll probably be different distances okay, from everything. This is what it would look like for me to do this. I'm just going to go in and out and in and out. I'm seeing and actually a couple things. I could just keep them going back and forth and back and forth and finish the side off that way instead of just going one around. So I think that's what I'm going to do kind of like lacing a shoelace and that might be kind of a nice little finish on the edge. So I'm going to do this entire box. Alright, so here is my finished box and really rough, totally rough. It's just actually I'm going to use this to give someone a gift. I put wire all along the edge and just twisted some beads into it and then I did the same thing in the front and what happens here is this hangs down on the box so that keeps the box closed and it's funky to say best but it's fine and then I put um, just little holes there so I could put some funky fringe and the just the pony beads I call them that uh, you just get in these little boxes they go on easily twist up easily I made it all and it's fine These are journal covers that were done with the same method. This is fabric and then once all the fabric was melted inside here, then once that happened, I did a little zigzag stitch around the edge, added some beading, and put some fabric on the outside. You can see how the fabric obviously is dull because it's got several pieces over it. This one, I used the turquoise on the outside and I zigzagged. These are actually pieces of bag that these right here that I um, put onto the top. These are pieces of fabric and this is cheesecloth that has been digitally printed. These, these bags are not digitally printed. This Tyvek that's been melted on the top, that is digitally printed and so is this cheesecloth. So you can see the little pebbly effect here and this just shows you how you can use this for other, you know, you can make these in other ways. And of course, you can make a box this way and then cut it all out. Now here's an example of what happens. This is a bag that was a printed bag, so it turns out really cool. But here's an example of what happens when you put something a little thicker. This is hemp. And so this didn't melt totally around it. It made little pockets around it and some places the hemp is on the actual surface because when everything else melted the hemp was too thick. There's nothing wrong with that but just that you're so aware that that could happen. 
Now this is actually clear vinyl. It doesn't stick very well sometimes. You really have to heat it up. But it makes a really cool surface and it, it's nice to put things inside of it. These are little slides. They work really well. They, it doesn't break as much on the surface when you melt around something. And then this one is cheesecloth and threads and fabric and it again is the vinyl. And you can see they're different colors because of the color of the vinyl. This vinyl is yellow and this vinyl is blue. It makes green on this side and it makes this look purpley. On this side it looks orangey because it's actually pink that's inside here. Then actually I punched holes in this by using a needle and put all those little beads around the outside edge, which is another thing you can do. I mean, it depends on how artsy crafty you want to be with this. This is the painter's palette from my table, which has got um, a bunch of, what do you call it? Now I can't think of the word. Oh my gosh, acrylic paint on the inside. And it was just where I mushed it up to paint a surface. So what I did was I melted it inside. So this is not gonna come off. So you could do a painting inside your plastic, let it dry, and then put plastic on top of it, and then it's locked in. This, I actually just put a fabric trim around. So these were just a couple ideas on what you could do to um, use other surfaces for these uh, recycled plastic. <laughs>